Hello everyone, I'm Erika of the storytellingjeweler.com and you are watching No One Has to Be Alone, our weekly broadcast to make sure that no one even in isolation has to think about color combinations, possible ways of using beaded motifs and spending Friday evenings alone. And I see already some friendly faces popping up. Petra, Liv, Donna, Gunnel, Sarah, Monica, Kata, ladies, Willemik, Ula, and so nice to see you, ladies. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Today, we are beading the Linda motif that originally is an earring. And I will actually be a good girl again and not start a new color combination, but use the same colors as before so I can have a finished piece of earrings, finished pair of earrings. And yeah, I'm curious to see what you will be coming up with. In the meanwhile, also Joanna and Kathy and Lynn and Zuzi and Janine and Corinne and Maria and Lutzka joined us. Very, very, and Marianske. Okay, I found a, I found a new place for my webcam. So you don't have to like look down on me. <laughs> Neither you don't have to like look up my nose. It's not so easy because before I would switch to this big computer, I had a built-in camera in my notebook. So I was looking at the screen, I was looking at you. But now with the big, big, big computer, I have an external webcam. And it's very tricky to put it somewhere. So I thought like, okay, I found the good spot. Now it's like in my face and not like, under or from above, but no, I can't see the comments because of the camera. So I will have to afterwards take a picture and ask for some advice from you because I am really like pissed and I am, I don't have any more ideas. <laughs> and I really, really, really trust you that someone will be, uh, will, will uh, can give me, uh, give me an idea. It's always so nice to like put our heads together and talk about all kinds of different things in the, in the club. So yeah. <laughs> Zuzi. Oh, Cheryl is also here, and Mariella, and Monica, and Deb, and Ria, and Leanne, and Frida, and Zuzi says, thank you, Erica, for this lovely design and your generosity to support Linda. Well, it's, I, I thought it's like the least I can do, and well, Let's get to the topic because today is special. Of course, we are, we are beading for fun as always, and we are beading to like keep each other company, but today is special. We are also beading for a good cause. Linda is a very long time beading friend. And she is the one who lent her name to today's earring, the Linda earring, or whatever the motif will become on your bead mat, because it can also be a little cute pendant or a bigger necklace with several motifs. Or I bet Zuzi will attach it to a filigree and make a brooch. So I got to know Linda some five, six years ago after I just switched from running a bead store to like, pursuing a career of a full-time beadwork designer. And it's like the best thing what happened to me. And this is the most fulfilling and happy thing what I have ever done in my life. However, you can imagine that it took a big leap of faith and I was feeling very vulnerable at the beginnings. And 
Linda was between my first bit followers, between the first readers who started to started to uh, check out my Facebook page and you know like I could count on her. She was there like I published a picture, she liked it, she she wrote something nice to me, she ordered my tutorials, she ordered beads, we were messaging and it helped a lot. And I don't think that she actually knew it, that she is so important to me, but yeah, it was really, really like, I really appreciate, appreciate what, what, uh, that she was always there. And Linda is a multiple survivor of cancer she had to battle cancer several times in her life and for 15 years she was fortunately in remission however uh, it is back and she needs surgery and for the surgery she needs to travel and she needs to stay there and of course like even even the procedure it's not for free and yeah linda needs her help and yeah so today instead of supporting the broadcast because i am asking a giant favor of you a huge favor of you so when you download the tutorial some of you have already done it then please check out the pages and you will find a page dedicated to linda where you can learn about her fight a little bit more and also most importantly you will find there a link to her fundraiser for the medical costs or to her PayPal account. So please, I, I, please, after the broadcast or during the weekend, please do it. And what's in your ability, please send a little contribution to Linda's, Linda's fundraiser. It is really a matter of life and death, and every day counts. And believe me that <laughs> it's not only something for Linda, but also you will you will feel that helping some someone out it's it's the best that you that can that how how, how you can use your money. So I know that that many of you actually already contributed. <laughs> And I am very, very grateful to have such a nice <laughs> gang of readers here today. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. And <laughs> yeah, in the meanwhile, Vered and Wanda and Lutka and Mektab and Lisa and Chloe, and Mirna from Den Bosch, one of my favorite cities in the Netherlands. And Elena, and Sherry, and Barbara. And Barbara is writing that she's saying hello from Bratislava. And she has nice memories about the workshops she used to have there. <laughs> and Laura and Sharon and Donna, Katie, Alicia, Teresa. Nice to see you ladies. So yeah, thank you very much. And let's start reading, shall we? <laughs> so what do you plan to beat by the way? And Anita, hello Anita from Almere. <laughs> 
So let's do a quick material check and tell me in the meanwhile, what are you going to be today? Is it going to be earrings? Is it going to be a pendant or something else? And I am also checking my material together with you. So first of all, I like to start when I'm combining colors. I like to start in the middle and I like to start in this case with a six millimeter round check glass burrs. Burr. Then we will also need some Miyuki Delicas, size 11. I used uh, my beloved matte nickel plated Delicas and I used only one color. We will also need number 15 Miyuki round seed beads and we will also need some number 11s. Those are the turquoise green ones on the picture. We will also need a couple of three millimeter fire polished beads and some bicon beads on the edge of the motif. And of course, if you are going to make it into earrings, then you will need a pair of earring hooks. And Nancy is here from Canada. And oh yeah, actually I wanted to say both to Canada and to Australia, regular post is back for only six euros or for free. So that's something good to know. And indeed, Sherry will beat earrings. And Anita will beat earrings and green and silver and rose. And Zuzi will try two different color combinations and decide later what will become a brooch pendant and what will get a pair to make earrings. Good idea. <laughs> At least you can postpone making a decision. So besides that, you will also need fire line. I use 4LB or 0 0.12 millimeter fire line. And I think that while I was talking, someone was asking uh, if she can use uh, 6LB fire line. And I think that it will be all right. We don't have that many thread passes. And uh, Linda is here with me, with us actually. Good morning, Linda. Nice to have you here. And Sarah will make earrings and Janet will make a pendant and Maria will make earrings. Georgie is here also. Leanne will make a pendant and Mirna will also make earrings. Ula will work on a, on bead embroidery. So she will make the Linda earrings a little bit later. By the way, Ula, I want to thank you for your nice gift. And <laughs> I got a little surprise package from Ula. And the drops are sitting here next to me. And I hope to, I hope to use them next week for a pair of earrings. And Esther is here. And Lutzka will be also beading something else. She will make a herringbone uh, rope, but she will listen to us. Also Esther. Ladies, I, it's so nice that you are you are joining us also if you if you are beading something else. That's really nice. And Vered will make a pendant. Oh let's see. So I prepared my thread and needle. Adam prepared my coffee so we can start. <laughs> I also prepared a giant mug of tea in a mug that, that has coffee written on it, but it's actually tea. It was really funny. I love fruit tea, which is not just flavored real tea with fruit, but like tea that doesn't have the tain, so I don't wake up from it. And somehow I can't get it in the Netherlands. So my sister Yvette, whom you know uh, from the club and the e-shop, she's regularly sending me tea from Slovakia so I can drink like tea without tain. 
and I just ran out of them and I didn't even tell her and guess what I received a huge package yesterday <laughs> oh I was a very curious Ula they are beautiful so one more sip of coffee and let's start if you tell me that you are ready to, to start Linda will you also be with us I'm curious and tell me, ladies, in a comment if you are prepared, if you have your colors. And let's get started if yes. <laughs> By the way, if someone wouldn't find the link for the fund fundraiser, I am putting it again a comment so you don't have to search for it and sherry is ready and denise is i want to click on the comments but you right so so fast that i'm i can't keep up denise is asking how long a thread she will use i always start with about a wingspan and yeah I don't, I have to say, I don't measure it, but usually it works out well. I don't like to use more because then it gets frayed and the thread gets tired. So if I need more than that, then I just like to add. And I was kind of like keeping it a secret that I'm not measuring and whatever. But then I participated in a workshop with he the Helena Tanglim and she told the same that she she is not measuring. So then I was like, okay, I will not measure too. <laughs> and Linda is bidding also. She will make earrings and a pendant. That's so nice. Cheryl started already. Cheryl is a busy bee. Corina is ready. Mirna is ready. Sarah is ready. And Vonda is asking. Jessica is, uh, is gathering materials and Vonda is asking where she can get the pattern. So the printable file, it's always available at the same place. I will put the link here. It's the storytellingjeweler.com slash no one has to be the one slash and let's get started. So I am switching also my second camera on so you can see my bead mat and let's start easy easy so we start by picking up the six millimeter round pearl and getting more light so you see my bead mat better put on the six millimeter round pearl and then I pick up nine pieces of Miyuki Delica. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I bead through the pearl one more time. So the Delica beads, they create a semicircle around my pearl. And I like to leave about 10, 12 centimeter or five, six inches of a tail that I will wave in a little bit later. And Linda says that her beads are from very similar colors as color as mine. That's so funny. <laughs> And somehow the, somehow I try to post the link for Vanda. Hopefully it gets through and it didn't got, get through for the first time, but I hope it will work out now. And second picture. Again, I will pick up nine pieces of the Delica beads. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I bead one more time through the pearl. 
So now I actually have two semicircles around my pearl. And what I'm doing that I bead all around the Delica beads to join them into a circle. And if you are new to bezeling pearls with peyote stitch, but you have some experience with bezeling cabochons, then imagine that this circle that we have created from the two semicircles, it is like when you pick up that very first circle of Delica beads to bezel a Rigoli. However, the thing that you are bezeling, it's already inside. But otherwise, it's absolutely the same. So I have these two semicircles joined into one big circle around the pearl. And when I'm done with this, then I just start working with peyote stitch. And as always, I am picking up one bead. I'm skipping a delica in the basic row and I bead through the second one. So I create this zip-like texture. If anyone has a question about this, then please don't hesitate to ask, to stop me. I am very happy to, happy to uh, show it to you one more time. As soon as I untie the knot, I have just created. <laughs> Wanda, did you manage to download the pattern, by the way? Did you find it? So I'm beading all around. adding Delica beads with peyote stitch. Oh, Viveka is also here. Hello, Viveka. You know, it's funny because I actually have a design named Viveka, I think. There is like, uh, there is, I know that one, one uh, letter of difference compared to your name. But I can't even remember how what was the original name of the design because when I think about it, then now only your name, Viveka, comes to my mind. And you know, it's funny, I created it like maybe 10 years ago when there was still an Australian bead magazine, then I created it for them. First, it's now available on my site. And I thought like, okay, I made up a name. It just somehow sounded, the, the sounds, they just... It just sounded sounded nice, but I have never heard of the name Viveka. So imagine how surprised I was when I learned last year in Sweden that there is a name Viveka. That was so funny. <laughs> so when I'm done with adding a row of Delica beads, then I am adding a row of number 15 on both sides of the bezel. So imagine that during those first three steps, first four steps, the Delica beads that we added, they create three rows of, delic of Delicas around in the bezel, and then there will be one row of number 15s on the top and one row of number 15s on the on the bottom. So usually when we bezel a cabochon, then we would have two rows of number 15s on the top and on, at the bottom too. But in this case, we will have only, only one on the top and one at the bottom. It's perfectly enough since the bezel is attached also through the hole of the pearl. So it doesn't have to be like 
super big to clutch the pearl. And when I'm adding the last piece of Delica bead, uh, the last piece of number 15 on one side, then afterward, I will bead through three Delica beads. So I end up on the other side of the bezel. And then here I can again fill in number 15 beads to the gaps, just as I have done before. I don't see any comments rolling in for a little while now. So I hope that the technical side is all right. Please, someone please write me something. You know, we call this no one has to bead alone, but I do, if I don't see comments coming in, then I feel like I'm beading alone and I'm talking to myself. So, oh, okay. Viveka, I see, she says, I am born in Finland and there it is, a rather common name. How interesting. By the way, my mother's tongue, my first language is Hungarian and Finnish and Hungarian language, they are actually like their cousins. So that's a nice connection. Laura, she says, I just love your effervescent personality. You seem so honestly happy, which is so needed in the birthday, especially here in the States with all the election uproar. It is, it is a welcome calling. <laughs> Thank you so much for your kind words, Laura. I really hope for the United States that next year a calmer and more peaceful period is coming. By the way, since English is about like my third language, I have to admit that I don't know what effervescent means or how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But thank you so much for your nice comment. I, I get the meaning, I think, from the context, but I, I have to admit that I have never heard this word before. <laughs> And Chevy is here from Canada. Okay, Corina brought something. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you are all right, Corina, by the way. Sharon is doing good so far. Bird is asking if I can add more light. Oh my God, if you saw how many lights here are around me. There is a big one over there. There is a smaller one here, and there is a round-shaped one there. And of course, ah, okay, I can add one more light. Let's see, I hope it helps. I forgot to switch on the big light in the room, which is indeed not a very big one. But maybe it helps a little bit. And Barrett, is it a little bit better, maybe? I hope so. Oops, Deb, Deb is getting tangled up. Elena is get, uh, gathering materials. With my speed, you will finish sooner than me. Laura, Teresa, thank you so much for your help. <laughs> it's nice to learn new, new words. <laughs> And Cheryl, Cheryl says, I pronounced it correctly. That's such, that's such a relief. Those of you who are with me for a longer time, you know how much trouble I have with pronunciation of ultra sweet. I'm learning. It's not ultra suede, it's ultra sweet. This is fuchsia and not fuchsia. <laughs> And I will try to remember effervescent. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> uh, 
And Nicolene is here, and where it says that the light is a little bit better. I'm really, really glad. I'm still like waiting for a handyman who would help me fixing that big light above my beading mat, above my, my table. I actually, okay, I will first show you the next step because I can talk like so much and then we never get anywhere. So this was the backside actually. And when we closed the bezel, then afterward, we want to bead diagonally until we reach the middle row of Miyuki Delicas around the bead. And exiting a Delica in the middle row, we pick up two more Delica beads, and then we bead through the next Delica bead in the same row. And then I always arrange the beads in a little V-shape already, kind of a V-shape. And then I go further. So I will add nine pairs of Miyuki Delica beads to the bezel. Okay, Corinna had Bell's palsy, which means that her right face got paralyzed. Corinna, you are scaring the shit out of me. Like, oh my god. I I hope that it's I I have never heard of Bell's. Uh I hope that it is something temporarily. And I wish you very, very, very fast recovery. I was missing you lately, actually. I was thinking about you today that I haven't really seen you in the club, so. I really, oh, Corinna, sending you, sending you healing thoughts and good vibes and big, big, big hugs. And Wanda can't find it. Wanda, here is the link, and then you need to scroll down a little bit. You need to add your email address and your first name. And then when you push the button, then you will get a tutorial, the tutorial, the download link into your email. So that's how you can, you can download the tutorial. And Corinna says she's fine. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Mm. Dear, 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 Corinna. Zuzi also says, get well soon, Corinna. And in the meanwhile, Reinhild and uh, joined us and Anita also has uh, experience with it and Jessica also has good thoughts for for Corinna and with full recovery Anita too and hello Sarah So, and Wanda, please let me know if you can download the pattern, okay? I would love to help. And Beverly is asking if we are adding the two delicas through the row of delicas or 50s. The delic through the row of delicas in the middle. So if you look from the side, then you see that there is one row of number 15s, then one, two, three rows of Miyuki Delicas, and then another row of number 15s. So we are adding the pairs of Delicas between the Delicas in the very middle. And now I am adding the last pair of Delica beads. And afterward, I want to continue a little bit more and 
I bead through the first pair. Oh, my thread always gets tangled around my the frame of my bead mat. So I bead through the first pair and then without beading through a delica in the bezel, I go directly through the first delica in the second pair that I added. And that says, take care, Corinna, it will get better, have faith. Lovely ladies, does anyone have a question about the part so far? I will put on step eight on the screen, where I am adding number 11 seed beads, round seed beads, between, always between the first and second Delica bead in the same pair and Sarah is finished with the first What if you are embarrassing me but I'm so happy Sarah <laughs> so what kind of colors did you use and congratulations on finishing first By the way, you would be so, so, so proud of me today, Sarah, because I was organizing my beading room. You know, like during the past weeks, it got messier than I like it to be. <laughs> and today in the afternoon, I was putting back everything where they belong and organizing. And yesterday I ordered some containers, and all kinds of storages to help me get and stay organized. So I am really, really, really looking forward to it. Okay, yeah, Sarah has a question. We had, had a really nice game last week that we were guessing that what kind of colors did Catalin use? And it was really funny because everyone was thinking like yellow, orange, and then no one guessed Kata's real colors. And let's do it today. Uh, so with Sarah, so what do you think? What kind of colors are was Sarah using for her first motif? <laughs> and Sarah says, "Good girl, I will show you pictures when I get all the all the storage and everything." I was so 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 looking for, forward. And Cheryl is guessing turquoise and Vitsa is here and Vitsa says, I thought it is Thursday today. Now I'm here. I dropped everything else. Hi, everyone. Vitsa, welcome. So nice to have you. I hope you are all right. and tell me what kind of colors are you using? And I'm waiting for the guesses for Sarah's colors. I will also guess. When some uh, guesses come in, then I will also guess to see if I am right. Kata is guessing green, turquoise and bronze. Linda says some primary colors. Okay, and when you, eh, I tangled my thread. Oh no, okay, I did not tangle my thread. It's just a tail freaking me out. Sherry is thinking vintage rose. By the way, when you added all the number 11 round seed beads, then you want to continue and you want to finish in the second new bead that you added in this step. Elena is guessing green and blue. This is so fun. I really like doing this. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, I'm putting num step number nine on the screen. And this is easy, easy. We need to add three millimeter fire polished beads between the number 11 round seed beads. Joanna thinks that Sarah is using blue colors. Anita, bronze, turquoise, and green. So my guess is, 
something pink, but not this crazy pink, as my Indian blues celebrating that tomorrow is Diwali. I will also celebrate with Indian takeaway. But I, I imagine a very romantic color combination, maybe some purples, some soft, nice tones of pink, gold and bronze, something like that. Mirna guesses purple and lilac. Ula thinks orange and black. That would be a surprise for me. But let's see. So Sarah, Maria thinks it's gray and black. I'm really, really curious now. So Sarah, can you tell us? By the way, this program that I am using, I tend to forget, but this program that I am using, it has the function that if I post a link, if someone would like to show their uh, progress or uh, show the result, then I can post a link and you click on it and you join me on screen. But yes, it's with your face and it's a live video, so it's funny, but there is a function. So if someone would like to do that, then scream, yes, 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 and I will post the link. <laughs> And Sarah uses turquoise, Picasso, purple, and beauty. Okay, I, <laughs> I can't pronounce that last word. But yeah, turquoise, Picasso, purple, and pewter, better. And that sounds really nice because it starts with turquoise. I love turquoise. My seed beads, my round seed beads are also green turquoise, Picasso. And I am adding in the meanwhile, and I bet it's very beautiful, sir. I'm looking forward to see your picture in the club afterwards. <laughs> and I'm adding now my last fire polished bead. And you know, it's really important to get like good thread tension with this motif, otherwise it would be like floppy. But like, again, not too much. But keep in mind, I will show you the original, that it's not completely flat, but it looks like a very shallow plate, bowl, whatever. So don't sit on it today, OK? <laughs> Pewter. OK, thank you, Corinna. <laughs> Nicole knows I love pewter. And Teresa Stila is Picasso. And Lien also loves turquoise. And Sherry says, I was totally wrong, but a lovely combo. <laughs> what fun, right? And Ula also likes the combination of turquoise and purple. So now, after adding all my three millimeter fire polished beads. Again, I don't want to start the next step right away from the first fire polished, but I bead until I reach the second fire polished bead. And then I am adding the combination of round 11, delica 11, round 11, between the fire polished beads that I added during the previous step. All around, all around. And Corinna is also using green Picasso. <laughs> Her Delica is green Picasso and Sarah is also laughing and <laughs> being surprised that Ula's idea of black and orange. Yeah, that's like something I could, I could not imagine Sarah using but who knows sarah maybe you can you you will surprise us next week and show us something with orange and black <laughs> it's nice to get out of our comfort zones sometimes a little bit 
So I'm adding ground 11, Delica 11, round 11 between the fire polished beads. So how are you ladies doing with the motif? Are you also finished like Sarah? <laughs> and I'm the last one beading. <laughs> oh, Sharon uses olive and pink. That is a really nice combination. <laughs> Esther needs to go. Thanks for joining us, dear Esther, and have a nice week and take care. And show us your show us your motive afterward. Mm -hmm. And Sarah, are you happy with the colors? Will it be earrings or do you stay with a pendant? And again, after adding my last group of new beads, I continue beading until I reach the Delica bead in the second pair, as I never start adding new beads right away after the first group. Joanna also loves Picasso colors. And Cheryl is on step 12. I think that's the last one, right? And loving it. I also have to request. <laughs> Sarah also loves Picasso. Ooh, and Magtop has red and gold and silver today. That's so nice. And Linda also has Picasso and Turk, and she loves Turquoise. And it will be earrings for Sarah. A little bit out of her comfort zone with the purple. And I haven't seen Kata's colors yet, for example. Kata, what are you using today? Ladies, when I did the material check, I forgot to mention the Tila beads. And indeed, I don't have them on my beading mat, but I prepared them already. Just let me grab them. So here they are. I hope you did not forget them like me. The biggest beads in the design and yeah, I still have a bit of, bit of uh, <laughs> video anxiety. <laughs> So, in the next step, we are going to add tile beads around the motif, always between the Delica beads in the middle of the group that we added during the last step. And I like to turn my tile beads in the same way as they have a little bump. So I try to give a, give a quick glance and try to turn them in a way so the bumps are always facing the top of the design. And this time I'm really pulling my thread to make sure that the uh, tile beads will not be just floppy. And Lian is doing blue and brown. Oh, and Kata says, it looks stupid when I fry down the, I guess, the color combination. No, you know, it always is like surprising. And then at the end, when you show us the result in the club, I'm always like, oh my God, she did it again. For those of you who are not members yet in the Storytelling Beading Club, and maybe you don't know Kata, then... She is like the color combo queen and she loves brave color combinations and loves using vibrant tones, yellows, oranges, everything. And she comes up with a lot of different surprising combinations.
Cheryl says, Kata, your colors are always worth paying attention to. You are amazing. Indeed. <laughs> and now I am adding the last tile bead. And then again, I continue beading and repeating actually the thread path until I reach the second tile bead that I have added. And I can right away put back to the box what is remaining. And step 12. Okay, so Sherry was not finishing yet. It's a bit more than 12 steps. So now, very, very similar as before, but now the thread path, I mean, I am exiting the same hole of the tile bead as before. We are still in the inner hole. Then I pick up two pieces of Delica beads and I bead through the next tile and again and again. And here also, please try keeping good thread tension. And you can actually bead all around the motif and you, you can, can really repeat this thread path as many times as you feel that it is necessary to get it sturdy. And John knows that your colors, colors are always, are always fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> And the chorus says, I love, love Kata's last colors. Indeed. colors. Indeed. Indeed. And that was again such a surprise from Kata. She was really into autumn tones lately. And then last year, it for me, it looked like the, the cold is catching on the, the autumn, autumn tones, tones of Kata. Kata that it's, it's like, like starting, starting to freeze. To freeze. <laughs> So Kata says, satin pink, denim, so far so good, amber, silver, matte brown, and my light gray opal to A.B. Swarovski. Oh, wow, so the time has come. Because <laughs> I know that Kata was treasuring those for a long, long time. So now we will see, today we will see how did she use them. And that color combo sounds amazing. And Lisa says, I am using the red, gold, and purple left from last week projects. Last week's project. That's a good idea. Like actually, at the beginning, when we started to do the no one has to be the long videos together, then before I would catch up with the pace of designing. <laughs> <laughs> and I needed like several days for a design and drawing the instructions, whatever. So nothing else was on my beading mat, only the no one has to be the long designs. So that's what I was always doing, that uh, I used up leftover beads from, from previous weeks. So it was like gradually changing into something else. And Anita already uploaded the picture to the group. And Dev says she only has a few colors of Tila's and doesn't like her choice. Oh, I'm sorry about that. But maybe like show us in the group and maybe we, we can uh, convince you that it's that it's not bad. <laughs> or give it give it. I don't like to if I'm done with a full jewel, then I don't like to even if I don't like it. I don't like to rip it apart like right away because I like to like if I have put already all that energy into it and time and thought then I don't want to make a hasty decision and what I do that usually I just leave it until next day and then make a decision sometimes even like I look at something in the evening and then the colors show differently when I am looking at the same jewel in the daylight or if I take it outside. And Corinna is using green variations. Nice. I still have coffee. <laughs> Mm, 
Eleanor. He says, I have some new uh, combi today, orchid with lime and rose luster. So I don't know yet whether they will work together. Well, first of all, congrats of the, uh, on stepping out of your comfort zone. And then you made me really curious, Elena. <laughs> and Joanna says, that Taylor, me too. I have a Picasso dark blue, but I don't like the delicas I used. My delica selection is slim. Ladies, what I like to do actually, that I I don't actually have lots of colors of delica beads and seed beads. I have to admit. So when sometimes uh, fellow designers or beaders are sharing like pictures of their selection of delica beads or seed beads or like round seed beads, then I feel like, oh my God, I, I don't have much. <laughs> but what I like to do is that I have a few of kind of neutral go-to co favorite colors like the ones I am using now, the matte silver, a matte uh, nickel plated and the uh, ordinary nickel plated and also the brown stones. And for example, some accents, like my favorite accents for fun. But I have like three, four basic colors that I am using uh, in most of my designs. And they, they pull the designs somehow together by being a bit like neutral. Then even if I had have like, I look at these colors and they are not like um, in one in one color, like it's not like several different shades or something, but these neutral colors, they pull them together and metallics, they, they, they make designs look elegant so if you don't want to expand your your uh, seed bit selection then i would advise to choose some neutral colors what you like and get all the different sizes from them i mean like delica 11s round 11s and round 15s and then what i like to do that i like to play with different colors of like the big beads but you know it's like i'm having like a capsule beading uh, room okay on one hand i live in amsterdam everything is tiny here if i oh my god i can show you now my beading room since i i finally cleaned i can show you my beading room how tiny it is <laughs> so this is like yeah this is this is this is how spaces are in the netherlands like 30% of the country is built on water taken from the sea or marshlands. So ground is really precious. And yeah, flats are tiny and expensive. <laughs> so I'm having a capsule beading room and I have to have like a capsule collection of, of beads to make sure that I fit. So that is my, that is my strategy that I select a couple of like favorites for the seed beads and then then I like then I like playing with the colors of the of the bigger bigger beads so and in the meanwhile Cheryl says, I am distracted. My neighbor is listening to something that sounds like sea shanties and I keep trying to make out what it is. <laughs> and Ula is working on her embroidery, but colors are rose and silver. Pizza. Ooh, mustard. I love mustard. Fuchsia, seafoam and pewter. <laughs> you are really challenging my pronunciation skills today. <laughs> A five second decision, so I could at least I'm trying to catch up. Sarah says, I have too much to choose of, so it's hard to pick colors. <laughs> Deb, she's asking how she can add the photo here. You can't add a photo here until the broadcast is happening. 
It is the limitation of the program I am using. You can upload your photo either in the storytelling bidding club or you can upload it afterward uh, in a comment. And Kata says, I just don't get how come the Dutch people are usually tall. <laughs> yes, in those tiny rooms, right? <laughs> <laughs> me as a tiny person it's not easy for me like to buy a bike or to buy jeans because i feel like a kid <laughs> you know <laughs> or i feel like a hobbit <laughs> but yeah they say actually like there was like good genetic disp predisposition of course but like by eating so much cheese and dairy products and milk that all the protein made dutch people grow so tall but i just can't get it uh, that how can they feel comfortable in such tiny flats as we do live in <laughs> and mirna says I'm going crazy. I have ripped up my motive three times already. Everything seems to go wrong today. Is the, it is Friday the 13th or something? Actually, it is, but sometimes it's just, yeah, it's just not working out. Mirna, dear, maybe try choosing with some really, if you are feeling like this is not the day to experiment, then choose something very 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 comfortable for you and yeah if you want to experiment more then i would i would i would leave it for another day maybe not to frustrate yourself even more but believe me i also have days like that sometimes i rip apart the result of two three days of hard work and yeah, I am, I am angry and I'm learning to be patient with myself because it is part of designing and it is part of cre being creative that not everything works out for the first time, unfortunately. Or if you need advice, then just post your picture after the broadcast. And I bet, as you could see, here are a lot of, lot of color specialists who, who, can, who can help you with some advice. Sherry also has mustard and squash and copper and blue to go with the turquoise. That sounds amazing, Sherry. Mustard with turquoise is really nice, I think. <laughs> Laura is asking if I have been to the States. Well, I have been like two times, but one time I was just sleeping at airports when I was transferring to Nicaragua. That's one of my biggest accomplishments in life, I think, to find so, so, so cheap <laughs> plane tickets that we traveled for like 350 euros, which is like just 400 something dollars from Amsterdam, from Europe to Nicaragua. So it was like, it was a big win. However, <laughs> we traveled for 35 hours and the trip included two layovers in the States. So I slept for eight hours in Dallas Air at Dallas airport. And then I slept for eight hours at a different air airport in the States. So that was my first trip. And my second trip, it was last year when I was teaching at the Be The Button Show. So I haven't really traveling around in the States, but oh yeah, you guys have everything. Big like big coffees, big houses, big cars. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's very different. <laughs> oh yeah, and Elena says that is why Dutch people were sleeping by sitting on the bed in the 17th, 18th century. It didn't help them that they are tall. <laughs> So, so true. If you come and visit the Netherlands and, for example, you go to the Rembrandt house where Rembrandt the painter lived, then you will see his bedroom. And yes, indeed, they had these box beds that it, it looks like a cupboard. You actually closed the doors and you were sitting. Like, oh, it must have been so uncomfortable. And Cheryl says, Mirna, those days suck. Hope it works out in the end. And Petra also has a bad color day. She will make a new one with other colors. Uh, 
And Sarah is excited to see the color combinations. <laughs> so now I beaded all around my tiller bits like enough times that I am feeling comfortable with it, that it is sturdy enough. And I finished by beading through both holes of the tiller bead, of a tiller bead. So I am now, my thread is now hanging from the, from uh, the second hole of Attila. And I will be adding combinations of number 15, bicon, and number 15 between the second holes of the Tillas. And again, good thread tension. Oh, and Leon says she has been to the Rembrandt house. That's so nice. How did you like your stay in the Netherlands? I'm curious. And what was the biggest surprise for you? When you came here. For me, it was really the amount of bikes. Like everyone knows that, yeah, in the Netherlands, everyone is biking, but until you see it, you can't even imagine the sheer amount of bikes that really everyone is biking. You take your kids to the school in the morning, you bike. Your child bikes with you, or if it's a smaller one, then you take it on your bike. Maybe even two, three, or as I have seen once, four of your children on your bike. You go shopping with a bike. I can take a lot on my bike now. I, I, I am well trained. You, I have, like, I think the biggest thing what, what I have seen on a bike was that three guys on two bikes, one of them sitting backwards on the back rack, holding part of a cupboard, and then the other guy on the second bike, he had the other end of the cupboard on the front rack. So yeah, you can even transport furniture on bicycles. <laughs> Everything is possible. <laughs> and Dev says, we'll need to find a different color, Tyla. I posted mine on the Facebook page. I think it needs a lighter color. And Leanne says, we were there in 2018 for our 25th wedding anniversary. It was beautiful. Yes, lots of bikes. And Kata says, same for bicycles in Denmark. Mm. And Mirna says, just added the fire polished beads. I'm really happy with the colors. Black, white, AB, alabaster, topaz, mud galvanized starlight. Good. I will finish it later, must go now. My husband has dinner ready. Bye, everybody. Bye, Mirna. Enjoy your dinner. So I am still adding the combinations. The groups of number 15 and Bicon and number 15. By the way, back to the back to the size of houses. Like also, I often even if I haven't been to many places in the United States, like yeah, often I see like of course when a friend is posting on picture like she's moved somewhere or like selling a house, whatever, then it's so funny for me to like see all the like so much space. What do you do in all those rooms? <laughs> How much do you have to clean? <laughs> That's the downside, definitely. More cleaning, less beating time. Let's admit. 
that's uh, the biggest advantage of having a small flat. You have more beating time because you don't have to clean so much. <laughs> and Laura says, biking is good for environment and just think of all that exercise, which is good for you. Absolutely. And I can't imagine how would so many people travel by public transport or by cars here. It would, uh, we have traffic jams or bicycles. <laughs> really, I will. Oh my God, I have to look it up. I have a video when like we have these bridges, you know, which can open and close. So when it opens, when a boat is passing, then all the bicycles and everyone have to wait. And then once they open the bridge, then the bicycle just go, go, go. So I have a video where the bicycles, after opening the bridge again, the bicycles are just going for like minutes and minutes and minutes. I have to look it up. So you see. And Joanna says, I think biking is better than driving, better for our Earth. The most people bike for environmental reasons or because space is limited and not everyone has room for a car. You know, like we used to have a car when we moved here, but never even used it with bike and public transport. If we go out of the city, then it's just so, so, so much more comfortable. So, yeah. Lian says, Mirna is my kind of person. She's beating my husband makes dinner. Yay! Oh, my husband is also always like taking care of dinner from Fridays too, so I can spend time with you ladies. So he went for takeaway. That's unless I wanted to eat like boiled eggs every day, every every Friday, then yeah. He went for takeaway, and that's great. <laughs> And Ula says, my cats are staring at me. They know that I bought fish. It's towing, but they don't know that. <laughs> and then Leonard says, indeed, this is the biggest advantage of tiny places. Less cleaning, more time for hobby. Exactly. Linda says, smaller space, less, less stuff. I would miss not having a large closet or space for a good studio. Yeah, that's like a downside of like, I'm always knocking over the lamps or my, uh, my tripod for the camera. So that's why I want to attach everything to the ceiling. But yeah, it's keeping me from actually buying too many things. So it's great. And by Anita. And Linda says, I like the idea of biking everywhere except in the rain and snow. Well, we don't actually have snow here or like not often, not very often. However, it is raining a lot and people are still biking, believe me. When you grow up with it, I think, then you all learn not to mind it that much. But it's definitely the thing that I can't get used to in Amsterdam that, yeah, when it's raining, then I still go with my bike and then I'm wet and yeah, not so pleasant, especially during the times when I was uh, working as a tour guide here in Amsterdam and I would bike somewhere, I would get I get wet and still then for two, three hours, I had to walk around in wet clothes. <laughs> and Ula says, if I have a large space, I fill it with stuff. Better to have smaller. <laughs> the only thing, it was so nice to talk to you ladies in the club earlier this week about, about books and bookshelves, we were showing each other our bookshelves and how and uh, our favorite books. And yeah, I need space for my books. <laughs> and Cyril says, I used to live in Manchester and there's actually a song about how it always rains there. <gasps> Rain doesn't bother me any longer. And bye, Sherry. 
And Laura says, I live in the country, five acres. I live and live in a ranch house, just two people and feel blessed. So much different than uh, CA where the vehicles are super crazy crowded as is the housing. I can totally imagine, Laura. Wow, but living in a ranch house, oh my God. That is very special. Do you have animals? I bet ranch means that you have animals, right? <laughs> Do you have horses? I always wanted to have a horse. When I was little, then I was actually saving up my pocket money uh, for a horse. And I was drawing diagrams. My mom and sister were helping me drawing diagrams to see like, if I put away money in this space, then how many more years do I need until I have enough money for a horse? And then when I became like 10, then I bought a bicycle from all the money that I put away. So I never had a horse. <laughs> and Lisa is using orange fire polished. And Laura has dogs and cats. That's also really nice. Nice to have some companions. That's something I really miss. Luckily, some of my friends here, they have cats and dogs. So whenever I feel like I want to walk a dog, I can borrow one. I can choose one. <laughs> Which one do I want to walk? <sighs> so in the meanwhile, I was not explaining it, but I added the earring hook or like I added the loop for the earring. And now I'm actually finishing my, my motif. So I will indeed have a complete pair of earrings. I'm so happy. So ladies, I want to thank you for joining me today for all the positive energy and your create, uh, creativity. And I am really looking forward seeing your beautiful uh, variations. So please, after you finished your dinner, after, uh, after you finished your beading, please make sure to check out Linda's fundraiser or to go to PayPal. I am posting Linda's link again. So this is like serious stuff. She really needs our help. So please navigate there and send whatever amount you can send. Thank you so much. So wishing you a lovely weekend, ladies, and see you next week. And happy Diwali if you are celebrating Diwali. Bye-bye. <laughs>